Now, Matthew can't be here, uh, unfortunately, but we are going to show his video uh, during this uh, time, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to see it online as well as the people here. Hello. I'm really sorry I can't be there for the symposium. By the looks of everyone's work, I'm sure there'll be some really great presentations. I hope my application video provides a little bit more context about the work in the show and my proposed projects for Interplay. Hello, my name is Matthew Woodham. I'm an artist and experience designer currently based in London. I build interactive installations and audiovisual experiences which explore the processes and dynamics of systems in nature. I'm interested in the perceived separation between humanity and nature and the resulting attitudes and behaviours caused by this disconnect. My work appears in exhibitions, festivals, music events and online, some of which you can see here on my website. My educational background in cognitive neuroscience has expanded towards researching the isomorphic or common dynamics of many complex systems and how these can be expressed as artistic experiences to connect audiences with natural processes. I often use live settings to create immediate, real-time experiences while integrating scientific theory and a critical approach to technology. Here is some documentation from my debut Arts Council London funded solo show and event programme Sensing Systems, which took place in Nottingham in 2020. In the exhibition I placed audience members inside a system of real-time interactive projections and artworks which exploited non-linear dynamics. This project was curtailed by COVID-19 and I spent nearly two years working primarily in online and digital spaces until I went to the RCA in 2022 to undertake an MA in Information Experience Design. I used my time at the RCA to develop new making and sculptural techniques that bring the often abstract concepts of complexity science into the tangible physical realm. I specifically focused on creating demonstrations of self-organisation, chaos and emergence. Here you can see some still images of the outcomes from this. For Interplay, I'm proposing a development of this work. Firstly, with Vortex Glass, I want to create a refined iteration of two previous Whirlpool Hourglass sculptures. For my RCA degree show, I made this version here using found and repurposed materials, such as 264 litre carboys, which are usually used for brewing wine. For my recent installation as part of the Vibrant Matter Showcase at the V&A, I made a small bespoke hand-blown hourglass in collaboration with glassmaker Liam Reeves from the RCA. I also included an interactive touchscreen interface in this version of the installation. For Interplay, I aim to create a refined design with bespoke glass fabrication in collaboration with Liam Reeves, a newly engineered automated variable valve, custom fabricated steel frame with integrated LED lighting and concealed tubing. The design will be replicable so that a series of the devices can be made. The series will show the detailed interplay between the imposed constraints on water inflow controlled by the variable pump and outflow controlled by the variable valve. The inspiration for my piece Arbor Kinetics began during a micro-residency in 2022 at the Lengths in Fort William, Scotland. I made this solar-powered experiment integrating slow-geared micro-motors into branches. I found the unfamiliar slow rotation of the natural forms eerie and evocative and realised that witnessing the natural forms move in this man-made, unnatural way could be a method of using kinetics to expose a feeling towards humanity's relationship with nature. During my time at the RCA, I also made a prototype interactive piece in a circular arrangement, which rotated branches in response to the proximity of the viewer. In this experiment, I particularly liked the interweaving of the branches as they rotated. This brings me to the first design in the series of Arbor Kinetics. All of the pieces will be mounted on a circular platform with a diameter of approximately 1.2 metres. In this case, the branches will rotate along their axis at different rate divisions, so they have a polyrhythmic relationship. This is my attempt to show the motion from a top-down view. Although their motion paths intersect, the bends and kinks in the branches mean they never actually touch as they rotate. For extension, servos will be used to create joints in the branch, enabling the branches to extend and collapse. The extended branches will also jerkily sway due to small movements in the servo motors. Varying the direction of the joints also changes the kinetic aesthetics, from a Constantino extension to more of an unfurling as it extends. For pivot wheel, the branches will be connected on an off-centre axle on individual wheels which move together via a gear assembly or on a rotating platform. The branches are constrained at a pivot point, which generates a circular motion. The axle and pivot point will vary to create a unique path for each branch. 
Topography Drive has a rotating CNC cut platform that behaves like a large can which the branches follow while being constrained in tubes. The branches will extend and retract along the erratic path, sampled at consistent points so the overall pattern of dynamics can be seen. In vibration, long flexible branches will be vibrated with concrete vibration motors. The platform will be raised on springs and the vibrating branches will have a specific resonant frequency which can be dialed in via interaction. For suspension, the branches will be hung inverted. A motor will rotate the platform, moving the branches using their inertial force under gravity. All of these designs aim to show the surprising array of kinetic aesthetics that can be achieved from mechanical constraints on rotational motion and provoke audiences to question the human intervention in nature with technology. I will create prototypes of these designs and in the process select the three most effective to develop for a public exhibition of the work. In the exhibition I will show a composition of the Vortex Glass and Arbor Kinetic series assembled with additional interactivity, light and sound. LiDAR sensors will detect the presence of audience members, causing the artworks to wake up, twitch and start subtly moving. The pumps will start slowly filling the top bulbs of the hourglass, and spotlights will start subtly illuminating areas close to audience members. The touchscreen interface will activate, and enable further interaction and control of the artworks. The control interface will both enable audiences to gain an intuitive understanding of the mechanics and dynamics at play, alongside confronting the sensation of controlling and coercing natural forms. Electrical interference from the motors will be captured and converted to audio with inductors, and natural sounds will be captured with the contact mics, which will be processed and mixed together to create a real-time ambience in the show. This project explores the interplay of constraints and the resulting emergent kinetics, the interplay of human control and natural forces, of interconnected processes and common dynamics, and of mechanical and natural forms. The unique angle of this project is exploiting the possibilities of combining ubiquitous and familiar natural materials with designed electromechanical compositions, along with the integration of complex dynamical systems directly within the work, for example by using turbulent water flow. With this project I aim to open a dialogue with audiences about the environment, sustainable materials and resources. I hope to engage audiences with the responsibility that comes with design, science and technology. This work is inspired by the emerging cross-disciplinary narratives from the metamodern and complexity scenes, which offer a teleological or purposeful framing of thermodynamics and the complexification of the cosmos, for example in the book The Romance of Reality by Bobby Azarian. The concept of constraints enabling emergence is also a vibrant topic in contemporary theoretical biology. For example, in the book published just earlier this year by Alicia Herrero, Context Changes Everything, How Constraints Create Coherence. Along with the paper from 2022 by Matilda Taha, Biological Constraints as Norms in Evolution, and the ongoing research of Mayel Monteville. The public view of science as cold hard rationalism and deterministic reductionism is still pervasive, even though the shift in science has been taking place throughout the 20th century. I believe it's important for the public to engage with these new narratives in science to align with the processes of the natural world. I hope to achieve this by creating an experience for audiences in which they can confront the dynamics of nature, sense the limits of control, interact with natural forces like self-organisation, understand principles of mechanical motion and kinetic aesthetics, and consider the interplay of humanity's interventions in nature. I hope the experience will provoke the audience to consider the human relationship with nature and imbue a desire to treat it with sensitivity and responsibility. With this project I want to explore questions such as, can you feel connected to a whirlpool or branch? Can you sense animate processes in animate matter? Do our attitudes and actions towards natural processes affect the systems of the world? I aim to use experiential narratives to convey the need to align and work with the dynamics of nature with our actions and our designs. I believe that intuitively embodying the processes of nature, we can get in rhythm with the natural world so we can then consciously design a sustainable future by building our own integrated, resilient, dynamical and self-organising systems. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to get in touch or ask any questions, please email me at hello at matthewwoodham.com or you can contact me on Instagram at matthew underscore underscore Woodham. Thanks again. Well, that was the first of many interesting proposals. Um, 
quite sculptural, quite deep in terms of relationship of things to the environment and sculptural expression and getting people to think.